Good afternoon. Welcome to the first ever, and with any luck, the only, Rice Business Virtual Graduation Celebration. I am Barbara Benedostic, Senior Associate Dean of Degree Programs at the Jones School. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the Jones Graduate School, I welcome you, the graduates of the MBA class of 2020. I also extend a very special welcome to the family and friends who are gathered with you, those who are right there with you in your quarantine group, and those who, whether six feet or six or 60, 600 or maybe 6,000 miles away, are sharing this moment with you. It is the same family and friends who have been with you every step of the way on this journey. We are here to mark, to celebrate the end of a leg of that journey. Specifically, we are celebrating that the members of the Rice Business Class of 2020 have completed the academic requirements for the Master of Business Administration degree, the MBA. In marking the successful completion of the degree, we are acknowledging the countless hours in class, in team meetings, the many cases, presentations, papers, and exams, and in these last several weeks, the many, many hours of Zoom sessions. All of the hard work, dedication, and discipline that went into learning this body of knowledge and earning this degree. You, the class of 2020, came in with style. While you were here, you changed and grew, and you helped Rice Business change and grow. And despite the challenging environment, you have left with style. We thank you for that. Associate Dean George Andrews will now introduce the winners of the M.A. Wright Award. This is an award that is all about you. George? Thanks, Barb. And congratulations to each one of you. Also, congratulations to your family, friends, significant others, partners, anybody you might be watching with. This is such a momentous occasion, and we're glad to be celebrating it with you. I've been asked and I'm delighted to be announcing the MA Mike Wright Award winners. However, if I have learned one thing over the past two months, it's how much I hate seeing myself on camera. So to make these announcements, I went out and grabbed some local talent here from the Houston area. I hope you'll enjoy these announcements as much as I enjoyed shooting them. Hey Addison, do you want to help Announce the award winner for the M.A. Mike Wright Award for the Executive MBA program? No, why would I want to do that? You're wasting your time. Dads. Hey George, you want to announce the full-time winner? The recipient of the M.A. Mike Wright Award for the MBA full-time program is Douglas Fiafia. Congratulations. Grace, who's the winner for the M.A. Mike Wright Award for the professional MBA evening program? Teresa. Who's the winner of the M.A. Mike Wright Award for the Professional MBA Weekend Program? Emily Swindler! Hey, Mom. Thank you so much for dinner. I'm just going to get some milk from Walgreens. I'll be right back. All right, buddy. All right, sounds good. Love you. Be careful. Oh, okay. Carolyn. Yeah. Are you ready to finally shoot the scene with the uh, winner for the M.A. Wright Award for the MBA at Rice Program? I've been waiting all day. George is supposed to bring the script, the name to me. So when he does, I'll, I'll be ready to go. Congratulations, Doug, Ryan, Boyan, Emily, and Keith on being voted by your peers for this award. That is no small accomplishment. And congratulations to all you graduates on achieving something that puts you 
in a group with only 2% of the population. Well, that's it for now for me. Until we see each other again, be safe, be healthy, and most of all, stay sane. Barb, signing out and turning it back over to you. Thank you, George. A very nice touch. It is now my privilege to introduce to you the Dean of Rice University's Jesse H. Jones Graduate School of Business, Peter Rodriguez. Dean Rodriguez joined the Jones School four years ago, and oh, what a four years they have been. We knew that Peter would lead over an exciting period for the Jones School. We just didn't know what all the drivers of that excitement would be. I'm going to save Peter's full and very flowery introduction for when we gather on campus for the investiture ceremony that we are all so greatly looking forward to. For this moment, this celebration, I would simply like to thank Peter on behalf of the Rice business family for his steadfast leadership in this challenging time, for his quite remarkably always calm and thoughtful approach to making the best decisions and driving the best outcomes for our exceptional institution. Please welcome Dean Peter Rodriguez. Peter? Welcome friends, colleagues, graduates of the class of 2020 and their families. I'd like to begin by offering a hearty congratulations on behalf of all of your professors and everyone at Rice University. We are immensely proud of you and more than anything else, wanna celebrate you on this day and again in person with your family and friends as soon as possible. I must also begin by acknowledging the moment that we're missing out on. For lifelong academics like me, there is no more gratifying moment than graduation day. Even for those without a taste for formal occasions, the pomp and the circumstance of a faculty bedecked in their regalia, of a procession across a pristine college lawn, and the moment of triumph when walking out of the quad through the Sally Portal with your classmates is wonderful to behold. Not having that moment today is a loss we all feel. You've earned every second of that moment and I am sorry that it is not happening today. I hope that wherever you are and whoever you're with, you're able to embody the spirit of victory that this day marks for you and the celebration of it that is warranted. In these times, though it's reasonable for us to be more highly attuned to what we have lost as a result of the global pandemic, we should also look for what this moment has to teach us and yes, to look for what gifts it might offer us. I submit that this moment offers us the temporary gift of a less hurried pace of life and the moments of reflection that stem from that. Think about it. For perhaps the only time in any of our lives, there is absolutely nothing to miss out on. There are no lavish parties, no concerts or live sports events, no incredible vacations around the world and no end of the year blowouts. It is simple math. Without Mo, there can be no FOMO. Sure, it's boring at times, but boredom is a luxury in a world that's spinning at a breathless pace and it has now been made abundant. And let's acknowledge that we do need boredom sometimes. We need it to stoke our creativity and to help us to clearly see what we miss most in the pre-COVID world and what matters most to us now. Boredom is also useful for helping us to remember thoughts hidden in the corners of our minds. On one of my countless walks around the neighborhood this month, I remembered a large framed print that hung on the bedroom wall in the home of one of my childhood friends. It was a print of the poem, If, by Rudyard Kipling. The poem has been made popular for more than a century and for boys of my vintage, it was a staple of birthday gifts, though usually from your grandparents or an aunt or an uncle. Kipling, as you know, was highly successful and a talented writer, a Nobel laureate, and also a Victorian imperialist of some controversy. If was among his most successful works, and it remains a part of our popular culture. Part of an early stanza of the poem, perhaps the most popular one, is usually televised every summer, shown hanging on a plaque over the player's entrance to center court at Wimbledon. It reads, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. I like that one, and it's always worth remembering. But the part I like the most is from the final stanza, just before the ending phrase. The ending phrase is, and what's more, you'll be a man, my son. You'll hear that in a minute. 
The poem was originally written for Kipling's son, John, who would later die in battle in World War I. Interesting. Interestingly, Serena Williams publicly recited the poem not long after her 2016 women's singles victory at Wimbledon, and she changed the final phrase to, and what's more, you'll be a woman, my daughter. However you read it, it makes sense for everyone. The rest of the stanza reads, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, then yours is the earth and everything that is in it. And what's more, you'll be a man, my son, or woman, my daughter. It was always that three word phrase that stuck with me and has stuck with me for more than 40 years, the unforgiving minute, or perhaps the unforgiving minute. It's probably because I'm not a good runner. And so I could always relate to the pain and the mercilessness of an all out sprint you give at the end of a long run. But the phrase also sticks with me because unforgiving minutes happen in many phases of life. I don't know about you, but I've had unforgiving minutes throughout my personal and professional life. And I expect I always will. We've all had that moment when we're giving our all to meet some goal or just to meet a deadline. We start out fast and we push with all we've got. It feels good at first, testing the limits of your ability, recognizing and feeling that you have speed. And then your lungs start to burn <laughs> and the legs begin to hit the pavement, pavement with an increasing wobble. We try to resist, but can't help but look at our watch. And to our dismay, what do we see? We're only 15 seconds in. Then something good and remarkable usually happens. Our savior, the driven achiever in all of us steps in and speaks to us. It says, it's okay, you've got this, you're doing great, keep pushing. It's, only it's already 25% over. You endure for a bit, that keeps you going and time does pass. Then feeling a little more ragged and hearing yourself in a full on pant, the savior raises the volume and coaches you again. You're no quitter, that's not who you are, that's not who you were raised to be. See that? That's the finish line up there. It's just up the road. You can see it. You're going to make it. And eventually, through all the pain, finally you do see the end. And you push with everything that is left in you. You're completely spent. But you have done it. And soon you reflect and prepare yourself for the next run. That wasn't so bad. Next time, maybe a little faster. This reminds me of you and of this hard end to a long race it really does define you and it has cemented your character. Today, we celebrate, all of us, your latest victory, though certainly not your last. You finished an arduous race and finished on steeper hills than you ever anticipated when this run began. Indeed, these hills were never part of the race for any prior class, but you, the class of 2020, have flourished on them. And today, yours is the earth as is the opportunity and the responsibility to make the most of what this unique period in history presents to us. Our world really needs your intellect and your skillfulness. It needs your creativity and passion. It needs your leadership and your values to address the many challenges highlighted by this crisis. Today, I want more than anything else to leave you with a statement of my supreme confidence in you and your abilities. You're more than ready for these and for the other unforeseen challenges ahead and we are immensely proud of your accomplishments. Wherever you are, I hope that you can feel the warm embrace of Rice University, that you reflect on the many great friendships you've made here, and that you enjoy the hard-won pride that forever belongs to you on becoming a graduate of Rice University. Rice fight never dies, and neither will the wonderful memories we are grateful to share with you and your outstanding classmates. Thank you, class of 2020, and congratulations on succeeding on the most challenging run our graduates have ever had. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your listening to my comments, and I look forward to joining the graduates in their cohorts champagne toast. And now, please enjoy the portion of the event highlighting the graduates' names, photos, and personal statements and videos. Sana Alana. Momita Anthony. Ali Audi Paiman Arabzadeh Allison Badoski Casey Briseno Shannon Ruiz 
Sean Burke. Keith Cockrum. Brian Collins. Chaled Damad. Christine Dobbin. Stephen Fain. Andrew Fisher. Pavel Galperin. Stanton Goings. Stephanie Goldsby. Bargov Goswami. Mary Grimes. Benjamin Halperin. Gerald Hardman. Juliet Holder Haynes. Richard Hoover. Kyle Howard. Matthew Justice. Yi Kong. Alec Kalkarni. Rui Lozano. Jen Mahoney. Marilia Maya. Fernando Marcancola. Douglas Miller. Robert Mooney. Benjamin Nichols. Aaron Novi. Jay Pasale. Bhagyashri Padaskar. Stephen Penny. Daniel Phillips. Sandeep Prasad. Thanks to my family, Tanu, Trisha, Sarth. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. Thanks for all the love and support for the last two years. And congrats, everyone. Michael Rice. Ryosuke Sekai. Michael Samuel. Claudio Schlosser. Timothy Schmidt. Brian Scott. Cesar Silva. Joel Simmons. Rajdeep Singh. Karima Sundrani. Anthony Tran. Sam Varghese. Hong Wei Wong. Joel Woodward. Yu Min Yang. Daniel Yu. Wen
Wendy Young Chun K. Kevin Yuan Gerardo Yupari Zarete Yuan Zhang Yulia Zidinov <laughs>